Hi guys, this is the, the chess openings. Um, I'm sorry for because I haven't made a video for quite a while. I'm sorry. But let's go in the Sveshnikov. I promised you something, and today I'm gonna show you my work. Obviously, claw, uh, school is closed. In Canada. So let's. Oh, okay, uh, this was something stupid that I said. Okay, never mind. Let's go straight in the Sveshnikov. E4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, D4, C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, E5, Knight C6, Knight takes C6. This is the position I left you with, and I said that the next video will cover this. I take my promises. B takes C6 is the move that I recommend. Because if D takes C6, well, you could play D takes C6 if you like end games, but after Queen D1, King D8. Uh, bishop c4, bishop b4. Now, uh, obviously, uh, he cannot take because after this and this, it's pretty much hard to see if um, white will survive in these kind of end games. So, bishop d2 is the recommending procedure. Pro procedure and after king e7 the king is already centralized and black has no problems but you see because we have taken with the d pawn there's no imbalance and it's just a boring position if we take with the b pawn instead it's an asymmetric asymmetrical position which is very very interesting now there's four move uh, that could be played actually in a tournament game someone played bishop g5 against me I played bishop b4 uh, no this is my friend that played against me d5 you see I have a big center first thing I'm controlling every squares in uh, in the center. Uh, so uh, and um, my C pawn is actually supporting the D pawn, so it's just magnificent. And if uh, the bishop takes my knight, I will just retake uh, with, ret with my G pawn and get massive center. Uh, just blowing him up uh, so it cannot work <clears throat> <clears throat> so after e takes d5 obviously now it's the same scenario so F4, kind of King's Gambit style. Bishop B4, we should not be afraid. If F takes C, uh, Knight takes. Uh, this is a game that I played, uh, I don't know, last week. Um, F takes E, Knight takes C4, Queen D4, Queen A5. Now, queen takes e4 fails. To bishop takes b uh, c3, and then after b takes c3, queen takes c3 check, taking the rook. So he played bishop d2, and I won a pawn because I take the bishop, then he takes with the queen. If he takes with the queen, the king, uh, I castle, and uh, it's pretty much hard to see what the king. What the hell uh, the king is doing on d2? 
a dangerous position for uh, for white uh, can either uh, break with d5 when I castle obviously then uh, if he takes en passant just bring the rook to d8 I mean this would be interesting okay um <clears throat> But no, this is uh, not the recommended pr procedure. But if we just carry a bit longer, queen f3, then d5. After e takes d5, you play uh, you play bishop g4, attacking the queen, and then you have a wonderful position. So the main move here is bishop d3 and after d6 supporting the pawn whoops sorry um see if i can get there Um, yeah, I think that was it, yeah, <laughs> thank you. So after castles, castles, f takes e, now you see the marks, it's pretty uh, not understandable, I'm sorry, but now uh, black will just play knight g4 and then retake on e5, because if he takes again on d6, you play queen b6 check, and when the king move on h1, you play knight f2 check. White has some small compensation, nothing more. Knight g4, queen b6. Um. So yeah, that covers f4. Uh, if we go back, if white starts a, cam uh, a campaign on the d5 square, as we know is the main theme in the Sveshnikov for white, then we should counter that with bishop b4. And after bishop g5, again a campaign on d5. This, uh, this is not how to say in d5 but indirectly at, uh, is not for d5 so h6 obviously and after bishop takes you take with the queen and well it's a pretty decent game but after bishop h4 uh, this is very very not good because you should not be afraid to play g5. This is the winning move, but not the winning move, but the recommended procedure. Now you win the e pawn. There's two moves to play. The best continuation is this. And here, um, it is pretty hard to see uh, if. Black, but well, it is not that hard to say if black is at least equalized. <clears throat> so obviously, uh, after knight takes e5, a game that I saw started with queen f3. He took, then played d5. After bishop takes, we should castle. This is very strange stuff. Bishop d3. Now check this out. Black a uh, white uh, seems to be losing a piece here, but he has a saving cause. Of course, it is costing queen side. You see now, if we take the bishop, queen will recapture, sacrificing itself.
and after we take with the d pawn we take the uh, uh, white takes our queen and he will be left with two rooks against bishop and rook we don't want this we don't want to let uh, our opponent uh, do this so don't take the bishop instead play queen e7 now we have a strict strategical theme that is coming into our minds the e file and even if the bishop can come on g4 it would be secu skewering uh, the queen to the rook after bishop d3 bishop d7 again the same idea <coughs> So bishop c4, uh, although it seems natural, it is not the way to play. Bishop d3 is the more solid and the best. Now uh, bishop e7, <coughs> bishop b4 is good too, but I like to play solid in a solid position. After castles, you should not rush with d5. Uh, this is not good. After e takes, rook e1 attacking pawns. This is very important. And after e4, bishop b5. Check. Wins um, a pawn, I think. Let's just check. Yeah, bishop b5 check. Um, well, white has some uh, advantage. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just gonna oh my god. Okay, so I've uh, ended Fritz 6, I just can't uh, understand uh, him. So we castle, and if now bishop g5, then we play, okay, let's just put it like this. If bishop g5, we play h6, there is nothing left here. If he plays bishop e3, <coughs> Uh, then here, uh, obviously, d5 is great. Whoops. D5 is, uh, d4 is threatened, so the bishop or the knight will retreat in a passive square. White doesn't want this. So he goes for the long-term standing plan, b3. Here, the best way to play with black is obviously and unconstantably d5. After bishop b2, bishop e6. And after queen e2, uh, now queen e2. Yeah. Now, <coughs> the plan of black will be to play bishop d6 now, supporting. These pawns, these pawns, and um, obviously you see another supporter. Queen, maybe go on c7 to support this pawn again, and this rook will get through the queen against in the line of the queen, and then these pawns will be monster pawns rolling on e4 and d4 this is just beautiful stuff and to just conclude the video um i would just like uh, to say that here there's maybe an end game when the b pawn will be pushed your knight will go on c4 and when your pawn will be advanced then you see we have a campaign of c4 so that is all covering the
knight c6, knight takes c6, okay, 